To do the sign calculations for evaporators, we need an overall heat transfer coefficient in the heat exchanger. A problem is that the overall heat transfer coefficient varies along the heat exchanger and is heavily dependent on, for example, what kind of solids we have in our liquid. Pacheco et al. proposed the following equation for the overall heat transfer coefficient u in an evaporator designed for dealing with sugar from sugar canes. This is obviously way too complicated to use in an introductory course to separation processes, so we need something way simpler and generally applicable. Our aim is to make approximate calculations for all kinds of evaporators based on general principles. So let us think about what happens on the two sides of the heat exchanger. On the hot side, you have steam coming in as a gas, gradually condensing along the heat exchanger such that the entire steam flux S turns into condensate liquid flow K. On the cold side, the feed side, you have a liquid flow F that comes in, heats up, starts to boil, gradually producing larger and larger fraction of vapor. Out comes a vapor flow V and a concentrated liquid L. Now, try to figure out the following. How does the temperature of the two flows and the overall heat transfer coefficient change along the heat exchanger? As the first step, pause the video and try to divide the steam side of the heat exchanger, the hot side, into sections where different processes happen that determines the heat transfer coefficient. Also think about what happens with the temperature? Ts in this empty graph is the condensation temperature of the steam. On the steam side, the steam might come in overheated, that is, at a temperature above the condensation temperature. Thus, there might be a section where the temperature gradually decreases down to the con condensation temperature. In this section, you have a very low heat transfer coefficient on the hot side. After that is a section where, the, where more and more steam condenses, while the temperature remains constant. During condensation, the heat transfer coefficient is very high. Finally, there might be a section where all steam has condensed and the temperature of the liquid condensate gradually decreases. In this section, the heat transfer coefficient will be rather low. Now, pause the video and try to do the same thing for the feed side. T in the graph is the boiling point for the concentrated liquid. On the feed side, the feed might come in at a temperature below the boiling point. Thus, there might be a section where we have a liquid that's gradually increasing in temperature, giving us a rather low heat transfer coefficient. Then comes a section where the liquid starts to boil. In this section, the heat transfer coefficient is very high. If you guess that the temperature will then remain constant at the boiling point of the liquid, you're on the right track. However, there are two reasons why reality is more complicated than that. Firstly, the higher the concentration, the higher the boiling point. Thus, the more water we have evaporated, the higher the temperature needs to be for it to boil. We call this the boiling point elevation. So instead of having a horizontal line T, uh, we should perhaps draw a slanted line and follow that. Well, uh, that's not the behavior you typically see in an evaporator. In a real evaporator, there is always a pressure drop along the heat exchanger. And, as we know, the boiling point is higher for higher pressures. Thus, the boiling point is higher in the middle than at the end. Uh, so we get a temperature that increases and then decreases again as the pressure decreases. You don't have to uh, understand this in detail at the exam, at least not uh, to pass. But, as you see, the temperature difference between the two sides varies in a rather complicated way, and so will the overall heat transfer coefficient. So, let's simplify to get something easier to handle. Instead of using the true overall heat transfer coefficient and the true temperature difference between the two sides, let's use Ts minus T as the temperature difference. Ts being the condensation temperature of the steam, and T being the temperature at which the concentrated liquid boils. The K value we will need in the equation Q equals K times A times Ts minus T is then called the apparent overall heat transfer coefficient. It is the value K appears to have if we pretend that the temperature difference is Ts minus T. 
Please note that in boiling, both phases have the same temperature during boiling. Thus, since solutions with higher concentrations boil at a higher temperature, the vapor is overheated. For the vapor to condense, it first needs to be cooled down to its condensation temperature. This will be very important when we deal with multi-effect evaporators.